Hi, hi, Genki Call here with the Orcs Path World Event for the week of July 11th, 2022. First, let's get caught up on the lore. The Nexian trackers owed us many favors, but they were new in Kristara and didn't know of the city of Hellcrag, so we set out for Groshnak. They lived closer to the Blight, and one of their trackers might perhaps help us. We traveled to Dro Groshnak, seeking a tracker who might know of Hellcrag. It was Groshnak. The best way to do anything was fighting. Collect orc tusks and skulls to get a tracker's attention. So the scoring is only slightly wonky. It's mostly easy to remember. So basically, you go in rarity order, avoid the blue, and as far as the legendaries go, Go for brawn over brains, <laughs> or brawn over beauty if you perhaps. Just go for the male first and you'll be fine. Um, the problem with this is this week, for one thing, you're going to want to do the highest level possible because points increase by 25% for each harder battle, so more points for the higher levels. The problem being that you're not going to see the legendaries for 15 battles and for 15 more battles you're not going to see the shade of zorn so it's going to take 30 battles to unlock the shade of zorn you know this is the way some of the events go and that is going to happen this week so let's go back in here and i will show you what you can get in the shop if you are extraordinarily lucky with the purple it doesn't matter do whichever one has the highest Although I really don't want to fight Trignala later on. She's going to Hunter's Mark, the first enemy, and that's going to be very detrimental to my team. Uh, but we'll get to the teams in a bit. Right, I was going to show you bum, ba, da, what trips you can get. If you're very, very lucky, you could get Hatir and Scroll, not these two. These two you have to craft. Jotnar, Storm Shield, Ketris the Bolt, the Lord of Slaughter, Tianyi, Tina 9000, Undine, or War. So those are the mythics that are in the drop table. We also have everything else you see here is available in the drop table for this week's event with um, purchases in the shop. So let's go in there. We're going to buy, say, three tiers. There's one. There's two. And it is extraordinarily rare to pull um, to pull a mythic out of this. So if you manage to pull one, congrats, because it is very difficult. It can happen, though. So good luck to you. All right, let's fight the Fist of Zorn. And this is my first team for people without legendaries. Summoner's Fury is a weapon that you get just for getting your red mana mastery up. So hopefully you will have it. And to do, I have three teams here, different approaches for people depending on how they want to play it. So the nice thing about this event is that we are boosting not just spells, but also skulls this week. So you can go either route you want, or you can do a combo of the two, however you decide that you want to play it. So, uh, no, I've already got that here. This team, hold on a second. Yeah. Sorry about that. All right, Summer's Fury does damage to all enemies and creates six red gems to feed the team. These two, Strigic and Pyrohydra, both do damage to all enemies. It's not going to be really that viable later on, but early on it should be okay. Scatter damage boosted by yellow gems, conjure a light storm. You could switch this to Stormcaller. You could go with Elementalist so that you don't get killed by those enemy skulls. It's up to you. Um, Pyra Hydra also does scatter damage, which really isn't that powerful. But for the early levels, it should get you through. And then Alistair is here because he gives armor to all allies and he gets a barrier. So you could actually move him up some. You can move him ahead of these other two. But early on, this is what I've got. I am going to change the class because my Sun Spear is maxed out and I am leveling Bard right now. So ignore this part, please. Uh, just ignore me scrolling through here and changing this. I want to level all the things. I must level all the things and actually could do Barbarian. Need to level that too, but we're going to stick with Bard. 
All right, so, all right, let's take it in, see how it goes. Yeah, I'll go ahead and equip that with Medals of Seasons for now, and then, oh, I have two badges of might, so we'll go ahead and put them both in there. There we go. All right, and here we go. Let's try this out. Obviously, early on, this is just going to absolutely cream my opponents. I'm pretty high level. I've got a nice high level of magic. Um, so, yeah, it's it's just going to go through very quickly. So, running this with Sunspear is going to mean you have a constant firestorm. Lots and lots of red mana for your team. So, I'm just going to take them out with Strigic here. And let's go ahead and do two with that. We'll do Fist of Zorn again. Then we'll switch to the next team, which is skull-based. I do love having the skull damage. I like doing skull-based teams. They used to scare me a lot. Oh yes, there's that summons I was talking about earlier uh, on an earlier video. Gotta watch out for those guys. All right. Anyway, I really like doing skull-based teams, and they used to scare me, but I've learned since how to deal with them. So this one, I'm using Barbarian, and let me show you why. So Triknala, um, she's going to convert green gems to skulls, and with Barbarian, I'm actually using the... Um, actually using Nature's Aura to get the Leaf Storm at the start of battle to have lots of green to convert. That's my thinking on this. But you can do this however you want to do it. Um, put it on any of these teams. For safety, you can put them on Elementalist. Mine is just maxed out. But the Anvil of Might is something that you get for getting your red and brown mana mastery up. I'm hoping that you will have this. Gives attack and armor to an ally. Just keep buffing the first slot so you don't die. And plus, attack does need you no good if it's on the last slot. Um, attack is for skulls only, and only your first slot gets to do the attack. So... Um, if not the Anvil of Might, you can do Earth's Fury, which I went over in the Soul Forge video. Love this weapon. It's, oops, I forgot the apostrophe. I'll just do that. It gives armor to your entire team, and you can use Mang. Of course you can use Mang instead. Uh, but anyway, uh, those are three choices. They all, Mang should be in here. Surely it's in here. There it is. Mang. So, um... Any of those three are going to be good for your team. Meng and Anvil of Might are both free with your gem mastery. And then High Paladin is here because it does damage to two enemies, boosted by his armor. And then, so you can cast this on High Paladin to make sure he has a nice high armor to do more damage, but it's up to you how you decide to do it. Triknala is going to inflate Hunter's Mark, make us do more damage with the Skulls, and then Green Gems of Skulls, as I mentioned, and Fist of Zorns. Wait a minute, Fist of Zorn also converts... Oh no, this is Yellow Gems to Skulls. My bad. So you can tell by the background here which color she does. And Apophysis has a green background, so that's Green Gems to Skulls. That's how I keep track. I don't know how I'm going to remember with Triknala, but... Anyway, uh, this is what we've got, and let's take this one in. We have a combo skull and space da uh, <laughs> spell damage based team. So look, I've already got all of this green here. I've got yellow alignment, though, so we're going to do the yellow instead of the green. We'll do that. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, I love my skulls. So fun. All right. Avoid the drake. Let's grab the next team because you can see how well that one worked. Now, something different. This one, you have to have access to the underworld to get this team because the Ocularan Leech is from All Seeing Eye. But it's going to explode some gems, get you some extra mana, and steal attack from the first enemy so they can't hurt you so much. And... Uh, Triknala is going to take away the green gems, but still, we've got the green storm again, and the Fist of Zorin once again. You can put something else in here instead if you don't want to take the green away from the Ocularan Leech. But again, the Anvil of Might, Meng, or Earth's Fury. And let's see how this one goes. 
I don't like the synergy as much there since we're taking away the green from this guy. But look at this alignment. I mean, mm, you got to love that alignment. We'll do that. We'll do that. And we might as well, as that'll take her out. Wee-hee-hee. <laughs> anyway, so let's move on. Oops, I put that in the wrong place. I actually have four teams with Mythics on them this week. But we're not going to show the Mythics yet. We're going to do the Legendaries now, but I just have to move this so I don't forget that I put it in the wrong place. Shagra is... Um, big on my teams this week because Shegra I think is underrated and she's a really good really good troop and I've always loved using her with the Al Gwai, but we're not going to do that just yet right this minute what we're going to do is go into the highest level here manage paste and the first team I'm going to show you I am using elementalist um, because it's perfect elemental 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 we have three elementals here, so you're going to get some bonuses if you've got this magma, magma pillar, mag, magma pillar. Um, you'll get a boost from that, and we've, this is the Flail of Guard, which just came out, and it's an explodey weapon. I love the explodey weapons. It's going to be great for mana generation. Mirage Queen converts green gems to doom skulls. Shegra is going to create six red gems and then turn all red gems to skulls. And of course the Fist of Zorin is going to take yellow gems and turn them into skulls. Again, we've got a little bit of a discordance here taking away the yellow from this, but we'll see how it goes. And I'm grabbing the next team while that's loading. Yeah, there are so, so many options this week of things that we can do that um, there's just so many options. I love it. All right, we're going to do this. <laughs> oh, if only I had green gems to skulls. And guess what? I do. Look at this. Doom skulls. Boom. <laughs> um, we've got yellow here, alignment, which is beautiful. Boom, boom. Out go the lights. And then just because I can, um, it's plenty. We've got alignment with Shegra even before, and yes, I see this, but I just want to show Shegra, so. <laughs> oh, I love my skull spamming teams. They're so fun. All right, next up. Next up, I have not grabbed the next team yet, or did I? I don't remember. Wait, did I just show? Okay, yes, the next team, it has Yao Guai and Shegra together. If only I had Divinia to put on the team, I would be a happy, happy camper. But she is not available. This time I'm going uh, with Sunspear because look at all the red. We want lots of red. We need red for Yao Guai. We need purple though. You could always run with purple. Fist of Zorn is yellow to skulls, red to skulls. We've got spell damage and spell damage. Summer's Fury is going to be really good because it does damage to all enemies and creates red gems. So Summer's Fury is a good choice this week for sure. And then uh, I haven't, of course I haven't tested any of these out, but it should work well. Yao Guai is awesome. I love Yao Guai. So, um, Yeah, I'm just going to run it the way that I have it put together. I have Sunspear maxed out. The nice thing about maxed out Sunspear is that you have Fireblade, which is going to be fantastic for the team. So this is going to transform green gems to skulls, and that is going to hurt right here. So not that it, Sunspear has Root Trap. Haha. -ha. So does Barbarian, by the way, Root Trap. If you decide to run something with a green storm or without, there's Archer, there's Barbarian, and Orb Weaver, and um, Warden all have a Leaf Storm, but they, possible, they have them possible, but they also have Root Trap so that the first enemy is going to start off entangled. And of course, Sunspear also has that, um, the Root Trap part. So I'm not going to worry about her because this guy's entangled. We're just going to do this and uh, yeah, we have to take that and do some damage to all enemies. Didn't create enough, so we'll do that and just kill. 
I don't want to run that one again. It feel like we didn't really get to show that off very well. And then we'll switch to the first team with Mythics. I have four different Mythics I'm using here. Um, four different options. So, ba -ba, ba -ba -ba -ba. let's see. Shagra. Perfect. Yellow to Skulls. I'm not giving them a match for. So we'll go for that. My Huntress Marked, which is very bad for my team. I'll do this. Because there was a lot of red on the team, or on the board. There's a lot of red. Will it match for? It might not, but I'm okay with that. We're going to go ahead and do it. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. I get way too excited with my skull spamming teams. They're just so fun. You just got to make sure that you've got a match for or something to explode the board so that your skulls don't backfire on you. All right, this one we're going to do paste. This one we're using Mechanist class for the 50% mana start for Tina and Carnex and the hero. Aha! Level of Guard already went up over. It explodes yellow gem, or no, blue gems, explodes blue gems and summons. The blue gems are going to feed Soldier of Wrath, and of course, um, with the blue gems exploding, you'll get lots of other mana as well. Soldier of Wrath does true damage to an enemy boosted by red gems. He's going to be, um, oh shoot, it's the only one that does true damage. Might be good to run, yeah, that's why I chose him, because he does true damage. He's not necessarily the best to put in here. But I want, I'd like to do some things that aren't just exactly the same as everybody else is using. You could throw Balder in here if you felt like it, but he's not going to create a lot of jet of skulls uh, because he's the only blue ally. Anyway, we've got Karnex for additional. We've got Karnex who's impervious. It He'll add a bunch of skulls. Um, he'll add 25% of his armor to the skull damage. He creates skulls and explodes 10. So and gains armor. I mean, he's just a really nice mana generator, and he has a 15 mana cost, which is pretty high, but with the 50% mana start, it's like 7 or 8. So um, then we've got Tina, who is amazing, true damage, which is why I chose the Soldier of Wrath to put in here. She's an amazing tank. She's got the spell damage reduction, and if she ends up in the first slot, she'll add 50% of armor to her skull damage. So she's gaining lots of armor and just will make a great tank if your other tank disappears. So that is this team, the first of the ones with the mythics. And then we've got three more after that. All right. So this will be green gems to skulls. I have no... No entangle this time. So we're going to go ahead and just blow things up with Carnex. We've got Tina ready, and that should probably take care of things here. Ah, uh, okay. So let's go ahead and do this. One point! What do you mean, one point? Ah! <laughs> it's okay. We'll go ahead and take care of this one like that. I'm really loving my skull spamming teams this week. But not everybody is comfortable with skull spamming. I used to be one of those people, as I mentioned. So this time we're going with Alistair is basically our tank. He's got a little bit of skull damage reduction, does some double skull damage versus undead. I don't even know if we're fighting any undead. The reason he's here, and there is a... There is a conflict here. He's going to remove purple gems, but he's also going to give armor to all allies and gains a barrier. The barrier is what I'm really thinking about here. Um, then we've got Yaogwai and Ketris. Now, the adding armor to all allies is going to help Ketris. And then Yaogwai is amazing. Transform purple gems to red. Oh, Alistair with this team actually is going to be really bad. And the Staff of Storms isn't going to work either. Oh, see, this is the thing. When I'm creating these teams, sometimes I don't realize the conflict until I see them and start talking about them. So we're going to put in the Flail of Guard instead. And instead of... Uh, let's 
instead of Alistair. I really wanted something that would boost armor and or life here. But we're just going to go with... This one will get us some extra mana gen, so we'll put him here instead. And let me update this. Hern, Hern, and the Flail of Guard instead. Because I don't like having the mana conflicts. Okay, let's try this out, but we need to change the... I forgot about the banner. Uh, minus purple. Oh, guess which one I'm using. <laughs> Yay, I finally get to use the maze banner for something. Excellent. Okay, so let me replace that team code. There we go. All right, fixed. Let's take it in, see how it does. So Yao Guai, I know, is just going to kick all, all boote, but I don't know about Ketris. I haven't had him that long, but he does have that boost. Look at the boost. Look at the boost, plus the medals and badges. Ooh, shiny. All right, we're just going to go ahead and take that. It's low enough level. When they're low level like this, only level 10, they don't have any traits. So that's why she wasn't able to cast right away. Um, really kind of want to go for yellow to boost my hero to, you know, explode things. But we'll do that instead. They can have the skull hit. Doesn't really matter right now. Oh, we've got a slow start on this one. I'm just going to go ahead and cast this and not even worry. I, I knew I had alignment, but I'll show this one another time. Maybe something higher level would be great. Um, and I was, I had, oh wait, I was using Stormcaller because it was, let's change this. Let's change that to Sunspear. I was using um, Stormcaller because of um, the flail that explodes yellow gems. So I was looking to have lots and lots of yellow to explode, but um, that is not going to work out with this team. So we'll switch it to Sunspear. All right, glad I kept looking at it. What level are we here? Uh, Trichnala, there we go. Higher level, excellent, excellent. And then we'll have two more codes to or er, teams to show. All right, so this guy does damage and destroys a random row. I don't even get to choose. All right. Um, we don't have alignment for this. You know, if you're comfortable with it, I really think that going with a skull spamming team is going to be better this week. I really do. Right, I'm going to go ahead and cast this. And no alignment, no skulls. What does this guy do again? He does have skull damage reduction. That's why he's up front. I'm going to go ahead and cast this again. Even though there's no alignment, I don't care. It you know, kill something off, flail to explode things, and then Ketris for the, would have been Ketris for the win, but we didn't need it. Mm. Might need, need to move, I'm going to try that again, may need to move the flail up to the second spot, just to be sure. And you can have the, the flail in the first spot. I mean, if you have fire blade, you might as well be taking advantage of it. So you can always switch these and might want to. Look at all that red. It's perfect for Shagra. Okay, um, so we have alignment for this, so we might as well cast it. And then she turns green to skulls. She has one, but he is entangled. I'm just going to go ahead and take that. Ooh, look at the yellow. I have alignment again for Yao Guai. Oh, Yao Guai is awesome. Blow things up, get some more mana. I would like to cast with, yes, Ketris, thank you. And plus 144. Mwahaha. Mwahaha. Nice. I don't think it has perfect synergy, but it works. So next up, we have the Lord of Slaughter. Ooh, shiny. All right, and again, I'm using Elementalist, even though I have it maxed out. I'm using Elementalist, however, I forgot to change this. There's no reason to have the Storm Aura. We'll just do that. Uh, yeah, but for safety, Elementalist with this team, you don't have to use Elementalist, of course, but 
If you're worried about the skulls, you might want to use it, as with any of these teams. But we've got the Ocularian Leech that's going to steal attack, which means they can't hurt you with the skulls. It starts with 50% mana, so basically with the explosion, you're going to start with full mana. Lord of Slaughter is going to transform brown. That's why I had the storm. Yeah, idiot. That's, yeah, idiot. All right, let's put that back on Storm Aura. <laughs> We want the brown on the board. It's not going to feed the team, but it is going to be... Aw, oh, sh... Hold on. I just did something. Aw, oh, darn it. Edit. Undo. Undo. Yes, thank you. I overwrote the wrong team. <laughs> Let me save this before I screw up again. Okay. Sorry about the interruption once again. <laughs> I'm just a dork. Okay. All right, uh, Lord of Slaughter transforms. He creates six brown gems, then converts all brown gems to Doom Skulls. Ooh, and inflicts bleeds and death marks on random enemies. And then Scleros is going to double the number of skulls on the board and create two more skulls. So if you have a bunch of skulls on the board and you have no way to blow things up, just create more skulls and blow up the whole board that way. So... I haven't ever used a setup like this before, but I like the idea of it. And let's see how it works. I love the Lord of Slaughter, and I like having him in the first slot, but Ocular and Leech would be blocked that way. So I'm just going to steal the attack from... Well, that's the thing about Elementalist. You can't steal attack from something that has zero attack, you nut. Ah. No reason to cast this right now, so we're just going to do that. Okay, maybe not Elementalist, maybe something else with a brown storm. Yeah, goofball. Something else with a dust storm would probably be better. Let's go ahead and blow things up. All right, I really want to showcase. Awesome. Okay, let's do this. It cleared everything from the board, and so I would steal attack, but it has no attack. Uh, we're going to try this again. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Nice. We're going to try this again with something besides Elementalist. You could totally go for Sunspear if you wanted to, but again, you'll have Root Trap. You can take Root Trap off, of course. But let's, let's do... Let's do Bard, because that's what I'm leveling. So you might want to choose something without Root Trap and without the Entangle, just to be sure that you have Attack to Steal, because otherwise, replace Ocular and Leech. There's no reason to have it here if there's if they're Entangled. You can't steal Attack if they have zero. So let's try this. Steal Attack. <laughs> I have that doom storm starting out. I love it. Okay, we'll do that. Oops. <laughs> but now I have true damage on my front slot here. Watch this. Oh, watch this. Oh, now let's double the number of skulls on the board. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I may lose this, but I don't care. It's so fun. Champion of Guard up front. Is that Champion of Guard? Yes. Champion of Anu. My bad. I don't have him yet, so I have trouble keeping track. There we go. Perhaps not ideal, but it works. All right. Um, da -da -da. Like I said, Elementalist will be safest, so let's just get rid of this and show you my last team so eh, i have to do drake rider i don't wanna i don't wanna oh this one's gonna be fun okay edit manage paste Ta -da! all right elementalist for obvious reasons we've got chilin up front who doesn't have any skull damage reduction but convert purple gems to red and brown gems to skulls we've got sekma that's going to turn the brown gems to yellow so not very good synergy there but um blue gems to skull brown gems to yellow the yellow will feeds will be good for squirrel reborn because it creates an additional five yellow gems 
and then converts all yellow gems to doom skulls. Mwahaha. And the Fist of Heaven blows up yellow gems. So maybe a different troop up here at the front? Perhaps. Up to you. Um, but let's see how it goes. Sekma and Squirrel Reborn together with the Fist of Heaven. I think those three together are really, really nice synergy. Just not so sure about Chilin up here. So I actually... You know, I gotta get those match for us. What's this guy do again? Purple gems to red. Purple gems to red. And then brown gems to skulls. Brown gems to skulls. Brown gems to skulls. I mean, I'm taking the purple away from the rest of the team, but I mean, it was just too good to pass up. And then that creates a bunch of red for the rest of the team, which is nice. I'll do that. Go ahead and do that work early level. Yes, I matched, uh, missed a match for there. And this is blue gems to skulls. I'm just going to go ahead. We're so early on here, it doesn't matter. See if we can find a higher level to do. All of the fun things to do with skulls. Yay! Okay, let's see what we've got. Kind of want green to blow things up. Oh, but we're going to take the purple. And... Yeah, we'll go ahead and take the skulls so they can't hurt me. This is brown gems to skulls, which no alignment, and purple gems to red. I think that's why I chose it, because of the red, but I wasn't thinking about taking purple away from these two. So you might want to change this guy to something with brown or something else that's red and yellow. Because of the synergy issue. Alright, so I really want to cast this, but I need some mana for this so that I can really show what this team can do. And that would be... Yes. Don't want to wait two more turns. So we're going to do this. Blue gems to skulls. And we have alignment, which is perfect. Uh, do this guy. He creates a bunch of brown that I don't want. And then look at all the yellow. That filled up Fist of Heaven. And then we can do this. Oh, nice! I love it! Nice, 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 nice. Okay, so that's what I've got for you. Have fun with it. Um, let Share your teams down below if you have any questions or comments. Please let me know that as well. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you folks soon. Bye-bye!